So two days ago, members of our intelligence unit um, completed a five-month investigation um, with the arrest of five people um, involving human trafficking. Um, these, these five, out of these five, two will be charged with the human trafficking uh, charges. Um, the other three will be charged with accessories, and we'll get you those after, okay? Um, but it was, it started on investigation on Cumber Cumberford Street, and also involved a location in New Bedford. And what it seemed like was these, they were trafficking women um, who would come from outside of the country and they would um, house them at different locations and Comerford being one of them. And from that location, uh, it would become a house of prostitution. Uh, so the, the women, of course not you know, new to the country, really had nowhere else to go. They slept there, um, they ate there, and they were like, um, unconfined prisoners, you would call them. And this, this continued, uh, we watched it, we, uh, you know, we had to build up a case before we could take it down. And fortunately, uh, the intelligence uh, unit did just that, like I said, a couple of days ago. Um, and it's, that, that part now is, is complete. And now we're working with the Attorney General's office and uh, hopefully to, uh, to take these people to trial and, uh, and make these charges stick. Uh, this is uh, Captain Kevin Lanny, who is in charge of the uh, narcotics unit and also intelligence. And um, Kevin, um, <coughs> so you want to add something on just the arrests they made themselves. And yeah, so we, we went to 53 and a half Comerford Street and uh, to- I'm sorry, can you start again? Yeah, I'll spell your name for us. Uh, last name L-A-N-N-I, first mm -hmm. name Kevin. So after uh, months of surveillance, um, they identified one of the locations as 53 and a half Comerford Street. The officers um, responded to that location on with the search warrant. When they entered the location, they noticed the women and the conditions they were living in, as well as um, males on the premises that were there for sexual activity. Um, seized a lot of items from that location. Uh, well, from 53 and a half Comerford, we seized <clears throat> a lot of uh, items related to the sex trafficking. And then back at the location on Ohio Avenue, we seized uh, $114,000 in cash as well as ledgers and other documents to prove the case. Yep. Can you say, uh, <coughs> Major said that there was uh, some length of time to make a case. Uh, how long a time was that and what tipped it over? What, what, what? So the Intelligence Bureau, oh. Yeah, so I don't, we don't want to, we're, we're working daily now with the Attorney General's office. We're, we don't want to really get into the case. Um, as you know, those cases do take a while, and uh, fortunately, uh, we had enough to go in and make the arrest. You said there was surveillance. You, you could see in, could uh, see in from outside. Obviously, surveillance and and other things that led us to believe this was going on. Other information we received, and um, that's why. You mentioned Captain. the second address where the cash was found. Where was that? So, at, on Ohio Avenue. Ohio. Um, that was their residence of the two people that orchestrated the uh, human trafficking that, that conspired. So in that address, we found $114,000 of cash and other evidence that linked them to the uh, organized crime. So, Captain, can you talk about how this operation actually worked? So it appears that they recruited these young ladies from both outside and inside the countries. Uh, most of them, not the, the four women we, we had, did not speak English, so they were very vulnerable to uh, being coerced into that line of work. They originally 
um, had thought they were going there some for massages and just to work and when they got to the location they realized that they were going to be asked to perform sexual acts. The women that, the women right. that you were liberated from this are from what countries, please? <laughs> All right, so I, I um, yeah. um, we have <coughs> the Dominican and Mexico. What were the conditions four. like in the house? Four women, you say? There was three women or four? Four, four women. Four women. I believe three from the Dominican, one from Mexico. Uh -huh. The ages? I can send it to you after. We'll give you the ages after. Of the victims? Yeah. Yep. Did they recruit an online major in some way, or how was this done? Yeah, that's, we're not going to get into that right now. Uh, like I said, and you know, that's why it, we're in a, a delicate area here where we really can't discuss that much. We wanted to give it to you, put it out there, but there's a lot of things that we, we just have to just keep to ourselves right now. Can you talk about how the connection with New Bedford? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it was just part of the, the strip. There's another house in New Bedford, and what they do is, and we were looking at it, is every week they'd switch the girls. They'd transport them from Providence to New Bedford to maybe probably other states. They'd keep on circling. How many pimps are we talking about? Are you looking for anybody else at this point? Oh, well, right now, it's, right now we have who we want. So, um, you know, investigation always continues. And how long was this? Five months or about five months. And can you say about how many women in that period of time came through this operation, or was it primarily these four? No, there was probably more than these four. Can you say uh, some? I can't. All right. But anyway, I would say I assume no. they've been offered some sort of support services. What did you guys do to make? Oh yeah, so we've had we had family services on scene day one, um, also there. And uh, we offered them, you know, every service available. How did the suspects know the victims? How were they brought on initially to do massage work? That's, we're not going to get into that. No. Ranger, what's your overall message to other women who might be in similar situations or vulnerable? Is there a message of some sort? Yeah, the, you know, the message is you can always get out of it. You know, don't think, you, you know, there's no, you're not trapped anywhere. If it's against your will, then you'll get out of it or we'll get you out of it. And if there are others who might have been victims of these individuals, what would you tell them who haven't come forward maybe or you don't know about? Obviously, come forward. We'll help you. We have partnership agencies. These agencies, Family Services Day One, are located right in, our, right in the detective division here. They have, they have offices. So... We're, we're pretty serious about that. Thank you guys. Let's talk about the, the conditions that the women were living in, because you said that they're right. eating there this and they're the sleeping there. All right, last question. Um, uh, Kevin? Yeah, so there was bed set up in individual rooms where they were living and also performing the sexual activity. And in those rooms, they'd have clothing and uh, various other items to facilitate the sexual acts. 